This video is to show you how to open up and disconnect a Newtone IM5006 master station so you can send it in for repair. You're going to need a few tools to do this. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. You need a small flat bladed screwdriver. This is a 2.5 millimeter. You'll need some masking tape and a marker to write on the masking tape with. The master station is held to the wall with four screws through the face plate. There's one in each corner. So first step is to loosen the screws. and fold the master station down. It's attached to the wall housing by hinges at the bottom and the top is held in place by this support strap. The first step after you open it up is to unhook the support strap from the wall housing inside the wall. Lift the master slightly to take the weight off of it and wiggle the hook out of the little hole that it's been put through so the master will fold down further. The master station is not so heavy that the hinges can't hold it on its own. With the support strap disconnected, we're now ready to start disconnecting other things so you can remove your 5006 from the wall. The very first thing that you need to disconnect when you're removing your Newtone IM5006 is you need to disconnect the master station from the two low voltage transformers that are mounted in the bottom of the wall housing. An IM5006 master station is very likely to be damaged if you disconnect any of the other wiring before you disconnect the power. There's two transformers, one on the right, one on the left. One of them will have a red and white pair of wires. The other one will have a black and white pair of wires. Take your Phillips screwdriver, Loosen the screws on the tops of the transformers and disconnect the wires. Lastly, there will also be a green ground wire. It will be attached to a screw somewhere in the wall housing. Where it gets attached exactly doesn't really matter. It's whatever the installer decided to do when he installed your system. Loosen the screw that's holding the green ground wire in place and remove the wire from under the screw. Now your IM5006 is powered down and we can safely remove and disconnect the other wires from the master state. After disconnecting the transformers, the next thing to disconnect is the antenna. The antenna is this flat twin lead cable. If you follow it down from where it comes out of the wall, at the end of it is a white plastic connector block. You simply grab the flat twin lead, pull up carefully, and it will slide off the two pins. Very simple. Let's take a brief look at the layout of your IM5006 master station. This will help you identify the next two things to disconnect. Here on the right hand side is the main board and it's easy to identify it has this large aluminum plate on the back. To the right of that at the top is the back of the cassette player. This is also easy to find because the cassette player motor is this round metal cylinder. Just below the cassette player assembly is the main intercom board. It's mounted flat on the back of the unit. And this will be the next thing that we're going to disconnect. On the bottom right hand corner of this board are the wires that connect the front door entry speaker to the intercom. So here you can see the two screws with the black door speaker wires attached to them. Not every system will have black colored wires for their door speaker lines. Yours may be red or orange or yellow or green. It doesn't make any difference as long as they're connected to these two screws. We know that those are the door speaker wires. Loosen the screws. 
and remove the wires from under the screws. This is where the masking tape comes in. Take a piece of masking tape and wrap it around the wires and use your marker to identify them as the door speaker wires. Just below the screws that we just removed the door speaker wires from is where the chime module is located. The chime module on an IM5006 is difficult to find because of where it's mounted at the bottom of the unit. If you find the two door speaker screws and you move your screwdriver immediately down, you'll run right into the chime module board. The chime module board is held in place by a little plastic bracket that's really hard to see. There are little tabs on the bracket, so if you bend the tabs back slightly, top and bottom, you can pop the chime module out of the bracket. And we're, here we have a very conventional Newtone chime module. In this installation, this is a musical chime module, model IA29. You can tell that because it has the two blue wires that travel down to the switch that was installed during the installation that allows you to change the songs. Since I want you to send the chime module in with the intercom system, you don't have to worry about the blue wires. All you have to do is disconnect the wires from the push button that are connected to the row of screws on the chime module. Just like every Newtone chime module, there are four screw connections on the face of the board. There's a large screw at the end. This is the common terminal. And then moving down, we have rear, I'm sorry, side, rear, and front. Most installations only have one doorbell button, so you'll have one wire connected to front and one wire connected to common. Loosen the screws. And again, using your masking tape, remove the wire from the common button, put a piece of tape on it, and mark it as common and then remove the wires from the term front door terminal put a piece of tape on that one and mark it as front let's take a minute and look at the cables that come from the remote speakers and how they're connected to the IM5006 master station the IM5006 does not have a conventional terminal board mounted in the back of the wall housing where the cables from the individual room speakers are terminated. In most installations, the installer will bring all of the cables into the master station and then he will bundle up each individual color of wires into groups. For instance, in this installation, you have the red wires, the red-white wires, the black-white, the black. You can see the cable that was added to the bundles. It snakes around and travels down to the main connector on the main board. Here you can see the main connector that's attached to the main circuit board. And you can see the individual wires that are connected to it. This is the other end of the cable that was attached to the bundles of wires with the wire nuts that's inside the wall housing. This is where your small flat screwdriver comes to play. Simply loosen the screws inside the connector. Most IM5006's use slotted screws. Some of the very last IM5006's use very small Phillips screws. Either way, you'll need a small screwdriver to loosen them. Don't remove the screws entirely. Just back them off a couple of turns and carefully pull the wires out of the connector. If your system was wired with genuine Newtone wire, the individual wires in the cable will match the color coding that's labeled on the circuit board. Here we have orange, orange-white, red, red-white, black, black-white. 
if for some reason your system was installed with other than genuine new tone wire and your colors are different than what's labeled on the board, make sure you write down on a piece of paper which color went in which location. Otherwise, if you get them mixed up, your system won't work properly and you could damage something. It's not uncommon to find colors like red and black and white and green and blue and yellow. Now that we've just connected all of the wires, I've tucked them all back into the wall housing for safekeeping. All you have to do to remove the master station from the wall housing is slide it forward slightly on its hinges and push the hinges slightly to the left so the screws fit through the keyways that are in the bottom of the hinges and the master station is now ready off the wall and ready to be shipped. This is a little bonus footage to make a few things clearer. I have the IM5006 removed from the wall housing. It's sitting on the workbench and I have it turned upside down so we can see the bottom of it. Here are the hinges that hold it to the wall housing and here is the chime module. I've remounted it in its bracket. Here's a closer up view of the chime module and you can see the little tabs that hold it in place. There's two on the right and there's two on the left and those tabs are attached to the metal to the plastic bracket that's behind the chime module. If I zoom in you can see the clips are the better. These are the ones that you carefully pull back and that will release the chime module and it'll lift out of the bracket. And once it's been removed, you can see the plastic bracket that's attached to the chassis.